Good morning, St. John. Good morning. How many love the Lord? Let me see you wave your hand. Yeah. Hallelujah.
Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Father God, we've come now this morning, gathered in your name to praise you. We know we can't do nothing till the Holy Ghost comes. So Lord, we ask you now to send your Shekinah glory. Let it fall upon this place and that we can have a day that we can look back and say, but I never had a day like that. So Lord, touch us now that we might lift your name, that we might glory in your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to do our scripture, which comes from Zechariah the ninth chapter. And we'll read a few verses thereof. Fact is, we'll read eight and nine, according to the King James. And I will encamp about mine house because of the enemy. I'm sorry, the army. Because of him that passeth by, and because of him that returneth, and no oppressor shall press through them any more. For now have I seen with mine eyes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh into thee. He is just, and have salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat, a fold of an ass. The word of God. 
for the people of God. You may be seated. Father God, we come now today on this Palm Sunday, day when you made your triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and everybody was there, it seems, and everybody bowed before you. 2,000 years later, we are still impressed by your presence, and we are still bowing before you. We recognize and realize that our forefathers have gone this way, and they have praised you, and because of that, we are still praising. Lord, we thank you just to be in your presence. We thank you now for what you did for us. We thank you for your entry. We thank you for your suffering. We thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. For without these things, Lord, we would not even be here. We would not have the faith. We would not have the trust. We would not have the blessed hope. Hallelujah. That soon and very soon, you're coming back again. Hallelujah. And all eyes want to see you. All eyes want to see you. Because every mountain we had to climb and every valley we had to cross was all worth it when we lay our eyes on you and see our master face to face. Then it will all have been worth it. And we'll say, thank you, Lord for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your glory upon us. We didn't deserve it, but you did it anyway. And for that, we want to praise you. For that, we want to just magnify you. For that, we want to lift your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, somebody said, Today was somebody's birthday, or uh, this month, and this month is the month of April, and we would like for the choir uh, to give us a little birthday music, and all of those individuals who were born in this month, April, would you please rise? Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. don't remember but that's the way it used to be huh you get you get about a mile from the church and the ground start to vibrate hallelujah hallelujah song of praise
Lamar Smith, no other than our own pastor, Daryl Jackson. Give my hand as we come. Amen, amen. To God be the glory for the great thing that he hath done. We all are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We're fighting on the battlefield. And if we lose our life in God's army, we'll get it back again. Am I right about that? Let's go to God in a moment of prayer as we get ready to service today. Lord Jesus, as I call on you every Sunday morning, and Lord Jesus, you always answer. And Lord Jesus, it's, 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 it's preaching time. And Master, I realize without you, there's nothing I can say, nothing I can do. And I pray right now in the matchless name of Jesus that you would dip me down in well's wisdom. Oh, Lord Jesus, draw me up with the cords of love that I be able to preach that you will be glorified. I be able to preach that mankind can be saved. Bless each and every one under the sound of my weak voice this morning. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 Something about that name, when you call him, I don't care what you're doing. Lord, help me to vacuum this floor. I don't care what you're doing. Lord, help me to fry this egg. Whatever you're doing, always include God in it. He will help you to navigate through whatever needs to be navigated. How many glad to be here today? Amen. And, 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 and today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. It is that magnificent day when Jesus the Christ entered into Jerusalem. And he was on the back of a donkey. And the streets were lined with people because they had heard about this man coming. And they had got everything lined it up. Let me go and find us a text this morning coming from uh, Zechariah, the ninth chapter. And we're going to find a text uh, 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 on that eighth, that eighth verse. The eighth. The, no, no, I'm sorry. The, the ninth verse. The ninth verse, please. The ninth verse for my text. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king enter into thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass. Riding upon a donkey, uh, upon a coat, the fowl of an ass. And I want to use, I want to use, I want to use, I want to use for a subject this morning, take me to the king. Take me to the king. Now, 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 this morning's message, matter of fact, all the messages, I want it to be inclusive. I, I, I want to reach the young as well as the old. And, and, and I want you to use your imaginations today. I, I want you to think with me and, and think like the people that was lining the streets in Jerusalem. And so my, my first call this morning, do I have any young people in the house that, I'm talking about real young, <laughs> that, that, that know about, how many know about SpongeBob? Let me see all the young people that know about SpongeBob <laughs> and, and know about Peppa Pig. Well, well, all my young folks that know about Peppa Pig, my young folks, just stand up. Let me see my young folks that know about Peppa Pig. <laughs> now, 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 if I told you 
If I told you Peppa Pig and SpongeBob was going to be at St. John next Sunday, <laughs> would all of you all be willing to come, wanting to come to see SpongeBob? Yeah. And that's the way they were on the streets of Jerusalem. They wanted to see Jesus, just like you all wanted to see SpongeBob. But, 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 let me step it up just a little older. You little older folk, a little bit older. If I told you Megan, the stallion, was coming. I, 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 if I told you, if I told you, if I told you, if I told you, that baby was coming. That baby is a rapper. That baby, if that baby was coming. The baby. Y'all help me out, would you? Help me to preach it now. Get these babies together. N n not, only, not only that, if I told you the, 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 the sisters was coming, the city girls were coming. That's the two of them there, the city girls. They were coming. If I told you all that they were going to be here next Sunday, you probably couldn't even get in the parking lot <laughs> because you'd be waiting to see them. Well, I know some people won't be, but, you, but a lot of them be waiting to see them. And, but, but I want you to know that's the way the people felt back in that day in Jerusalem. So a, after I done got through that, I done got through that, that little older age, but now I want to step it up a little high, higher. Back in, back in 2009, when our first black president inauguration, and, and in other words, when, when he and his wife and children walked out on the stage, the great songwriter Stevie Wonder came out with a tune. Oh, we. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's cut, it, cut, it, cut it. Can you imagine how exciting that was? Weren't you excited to see the, the first national black president? Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. That's the same thing when Jesus came into the city of Nazareth on a donkey. He was telling them, I came down through 42 generations. I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I am signed, sealed, and delivered to you. Right. <laughs> when I think about the goodness yeah. of my Lord and my Savior, so I want all of us to be on the same page today. Know that we are, we are happy and we are blessed. And, and, and during that inauguration of Obama, many stood in freezing cold blocks away. They could only see images of the first couple on large monitors and heard the president's voice on large speakers. Uh, their feet were frozen, but they were in the presence of greatness, even from a distance. Some who could not travel to Washington, D.C., pulled close to their television sets, placed their hands on the screen, and swore they could feel the power that was coming through the stream. They, they could feel it, and some was crying in tears because they had never, never seen what was taking place like this. And I can imagine, I can imagine those people in Jerusalem, if you can understand that excitement, then you can understand the enthusiasm of the people that was in Jerusalem. When that word spread out that the great healer was coming to town. The great miracle worker was coming to town. In, in other words, the one that can, can, can heal her was coming to town. Can you um, only imagine 
how the streets was lining up, rushing to see him. Almost, it was, it was far greater than the old time Christmas parade. You know, back then we would rush to the streets and just try to get in the crowd just to, just to see who was coming down the street. Y'all don't, y'all don't forget about that. <laughs> the crowd formed well in advance. In other words, the crowd made it early because they didn't want to miss nothing. They wanted to be there. They wanted to see everything that was taking place. He was the prophesied. He had been prophesied for hundreds of years. And they was waiting on his return. And he was the focal point of their hopes, of their dreams. And Jesus the Christ was here. And they were so happy. They were so tickled and pleased. On that street, the blind was lined up on the street. I can imagine on that street the lame, the cripple was there because he had healed so many people. He had blessed so many people. I can imagine Jared's daughter was on that street watching and looking as Jesus, the way maker, the healer, was coming by. In other words, those who were physically challenged, they was listening. Those who were blessed in the crowd, they was listening. Some of the afflicted, the sick, the bad listened to the cheers of the crowd and felt a part of what was going on. As Jesus coming down the street, those that was in their sick bed, they couldn't get up and walk, but they could hear the crowd, they could hear the emotion, they could hear the excitement, they could hear the joy. And they were electrified just by hearing what was going on. And some, they were so happy that the king would restore their people to the greatness that they once enjoyed when King David was the king and when King Solomon were the king. They were so happy. And then there was others who, uh, 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 others who, who, who realized that this king would bring joy he would bring peace, he would bring love, and he would bring happiness. And they all were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the word Hosanna means, they were saying, Lord, save us. Lord, save us. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And today the Lord still generates excitement. When you start talking about the Lord, around folk that know the Lord, you, you start talking about what he done for me. You start talking about how he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. You start talking about this great bad accident that I was in, but the Lord stepped in, made a way out of no way. You start talking about when I was in the hospital, the doctors had given me up, but when the Lord stepped in, he picked me right on up. We're still talking about God. And we say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you don't mind who's listening. You don't care what folks say about you. You don't mind praising the Lord. You are lift up holy hands because you realize people don't have no heaven, don't have no hell to put you in. All my praises being given to God. And when you think about that, in our moments of doubt and despair, like millions around the world, we look to him for our relief. We do. We look to God. We pray to God. As Christians, we desire to be in the presence of the Lord. In his presence, sorrow will end. In his presence, joy will begin. He is hope, and we put our trust in him. When the world gets the best of us, and our soul cries out, take me to the king. I know there was a songwriter by the name of Tamula, Tamula Man, Man. And that Kurt Franklin wrote the song, but Tamula Man uh, was singing the song. And she was singing the song, take me.
to the king. In other words, she said, I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. In other words, my pieces is my heart. It's my offering that I'm giving. Take me to the king. Because you know when you get to the king, the king can fix whatever's wrong. When you get to the king, the king can give you joy for that sadness. When you get to the king, the king can give you an answer for all of your problems. Am I right about that? Take me to the king. And that song went on up high on the chart when she, when she began to sing that. But Kurt Franklin wrote it for her to sing. But looking at this text, this text focuses on a prophecy and a fulfillment of prophecy. The promise of the king and the arrival of the king. Now, Zechariah prophesied during the restoration period after the return of Israel from captivity. Perhaps more than any other prophet, Zechariah made constant projections about the coming of Christ, who is known as the King of Glory. In other words, three prophets gave detailed prophecies of the coming of the King. Daniel told of a stone carved out from a mountain that would destroy evil nations. That stone was the kingdom of God. Isaiah made vivid description of the birth of the Messiah, noting that he would be born of a virgin, but also noting that he would be wounded for our transgression. Bruised? <laughs> for our iniquities. And Zechariah saw a day when the king would come that would usher in a time and an air of eternal peace and joy. He prophesied that the king would come into the city riding on a donkey. In other words, the message, the king coming. And Matthew recorded the fulfillment of Zechariah's prophecy and Jesus had taught and healed for three years throughout the region. His reputation had spread it from village to village. He had become a celebrity to many people. Although he never sought celebrity status, many thought of him as a great prophet, a great healer, a divine teacher, and were drawn to greet him as he entered Jerusalem. When they heard that Jesus would enter the city riding on a donkey, the crowd went crazy because they related him riding on a donkey to the prophecy that Zechariah had given. Said, your king will come riding on a donkey and they went wild they lost it they was passing out palm branches and and they was throwing their clothes in the way for jesus to the horse the, the donkey to walk on they was giving him high fives and everything they were so so happy because they had been praying for years and hundreds of years for the savior to come and you know Isaiah talked about him coming 700 years before he showed up. It was already had been prophesied that the Savior was coming. And now he is here. And they, and they went, went slap crazy. As he came, the multitude greeted him and threw their garments along the road to honor him. Others cut down branches from palm trees and waved them in the air. As if they just, <laughs> I got carried away on that. But they, they waved him in the air and shouted praises to him as they passed him by. They, they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, which was a, a ramic, which means save us. Save us. Save us, Jesus. Save us. You are here. 
You, you have the power. You can save us. And we are so happy that you are here. And, and, and we are today, we are happy that we can get in touch. How many know you can get in touch with him today? How many know you, you can call him up? You can get in touch with him today. And, 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 and in other words, you, you can call him up. How many know his number is 1-1-1? One dash one, dash one? one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. You can call him up and get in touch with him. Old folks say Jesus is on the main line. Call him up and talk to him right now. Uh-huh. Those who wanted to be blessed. They shouted for joy because the Lord was passing by. Good things happen when the Lord passed by. When the Lord passed by, good things happen. There was a man who had been crippled for 38 long years. He was sitting down by the pool waiting to be cast into the water, and, and, and the Lord passed by. And Jesus told him to pick up his bed. That's a short version of it. Pick up his bed and go on and walk down the street. Am I right about it? Blind Bartimaeus was sitting on the side of the road, and, and when Jesus was passing by, he heard about who he was. Bartimaeus said, who is that? They said, that Jesus. And he called out Jesus the loudest. They were saying, quiet down, hush, don't talk so loud. But no, when Jesus is passing by, that's not time to be quiet. When the Lord is passing by, that's not the time to be quiet. You need to lift up holy hands. Let folk know whose side you're on. Am I right about it? Because when the lady with the issue of blood, Jesus was passing by. He, she was coming through the city. But when she touched, when she touched, woo, when she touched the hem of his garment, she was made whole. And you see, all that is, that's faith. When you reach out in faith, that's what touches Jesus. You reach out in faith, you know. In other words, God, I'm not putting you in no corner, but, but I'm believing you're going to heal my body. Yeah. Not saying that you're going to heal me just right this second, but I know it's going to get done. Yeah. And when you put your faith out there, you're expecting a healing. You're expecting to be well. Yeah. You're expecting God to make you whole. And when you get your faith out there, because, see, it's impossible to please God without faith. When I'm going through something, I want you to take me to the king. Take me to the king where I can get all my answers answered. Take me to the king where I can feel the betterment of myself. Take me to the king where I can restore that love ship that I need to have. Oh, take me to the king when folk aggravate Yeah, that's right. That's what I was going to say. I didn't say it. When folk aggravate you, take me to the king. Am I right about that? God knows what to do. When you know him for yourself, God will, will work things out for you. When the king passes by, it is the wrong time to keep quiet. That's the time to shout out, pass me not. Pass me not. Oh, gentle Savior, oh, 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 oh. hear my humble cry. He said, while on others thou art calling, Woo, please do not Woo, pass me by. Anybody ever been to that point before? When you feel like you're so down and say, Lord, please do not pass me by. Hear my humble cry. Those who need a blessing should cry out, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Those who are in need, those who are in need are shouting, take me to the king. We all need the Lord, but we expressly need him when we are at our lowest point. When you're down to your lowest point and you feel like there's nobody in your corner, feel like there's nobody there to help you. You feel like you can't see your way out. You don't know which direction you're going in. You, you, you are at your lowest point. You need Jesus. Take me to the king. And we want to take our needs to God. 
Because Philippians 4 and 19 said, but my God, but my God, shall supply, how many? All of my needs. You know, in other words, don't care what I need, he got it. All of my needs. And, 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 and that's just in glory, his glory and riches in Christ Jesus. He got it. When we face fearful situations, we must go to the king for courage. We know he will hear us because Psalms 34 and 4 said, I sought the Lord. Uh-huh. And he heard me. And he delivered me from all of my enemies. In other words, when I go to him, Sister Crank, you know, when I sought the Lord, when I know the devil is on my case, and I go to God, and God will fight my battle. Sister Dawkins, if I just be still, he'll fight my battle. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? But then I'm going to take you a little further on. If I go to Psalms 34 and 8, it said, oh, taste. And see, if you don't believe it, try it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It is the fear that Moses had before he led Israel across the Red Sea. It is the fear that Joshua had when he saw the walls of Jericho. It is the fear that David had when he faced Goliath. They all needed encouragement. And they found it all from the king of glory, the Lord Jesus the Christ. When you're facing your worstest enemy, don't, don't face it by yourself. Go to God in prayer. God will engage you. He will give you strength. You, he'll give you power to hold on. Because Isaiah say, they that wait, you got to learn how to wait upon the Lord. Because some things in your life God might be allowing the devil to use you or some folks to use you to get a point across that you don't even know. But you got to be like Job when you're going through. He said, Job said, even though he slayed me, yet will I trust him. I don't care what you do to me. I'm going to stay with the Lord because I know he can make a way. That's like Abraham when he got ready to kill his son. Abraham knew that in his spirit and in his soul that if the Lord took his son, God was able to give him his son back. You got to have that faith and know that God is the way maker. He's the one you need. Take me to the king because we, I mean, he was wounded for my transgression and bruised for my iniquity. Take me to the king because only his blood can save me. No wonder the songwriter wrote, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And when I think about God and all he has done for me, I want you to know that God is the one to call on. Finally, brothers and sisters, because we know that our God is able to deliver us, lift us, and restore us, we join the crowd around the world who said, take me to the king. In other words, the crowd on Palm Sunday cries out, Hosanna, thy king coming. But today we lift up hands saying, take me to the king. We want to see the king because we heard that we have been de delivered. We heard there is a banquet. We want to be at the banquet dinner because we've been invited. We've heard about the blessing God has in store for us. That's why we sing, I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with the power of a hand. Take me to the king. Because when I'm sick, he makes me whole. Take me to the king. Lift up your head, O ye gate, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king? The Lord strong and mighty. Who is this king? The Lord mighty in battle. Who is this king? 
Somebody call him the Prince of Peace. Who is this king? Somebody call him the wonder worker. Who is this king? Somebody call him the Lamb of God. Some say he's the Alpha and the Omega. Who is this king? His name is Jesus. Jesus the Christ. Take me to the king. This king came down through 42 generations. Take me to the king. This king, this king had a crown on his head made out of thorns for a crown. Take me to the king. This king who said, you can bury me. Three days later, I raised this temple back up again. Take me to the king. He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Take me to the king. The same king that my daddy told me about, he said, boy, I won't be with you always, but I want you to know the Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ will be with you always after I'm dead and gone. So many times I have to call on him. So many times I have to call on Jesus. And there's been times when I, I don't know what to pray for. And all I say is just Jesus. Jesus. Somehow the Holy Spirit will intersect and step in and do what needs to be done. Am I right about it? Take me to the king. Whatever you're going through in life, take you to the king. Go with the song that Tamala Mann said, take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. I don't have much of an offering. My heart is torn in pieces. That's all I got there. Oh, take me, take me to the king. And just like, the old timers used to say, just a little talk. You know, just a little talk with Jesus. When you think you're about to sink, do like Peter did. Peter said, Lord, save me. That's the quickest and the shortest prayer in the Bible. Peter didn't have time to say, I'm on bended knees. He didn't have time to go through all that. All he had time to say, Lord, save me. And there'll be many a time when we'll be just like that. We don't have to go through all the preliminaries. We go right to the point. Lord, I need a house payment. Yeah, I need a house payment. I need a job. And then let God open up doors for you. But in the meantime, while God is opening up doors, don't you sit on the stool or do nothing. You, you get out and work too. Because faith without work is dead. Today is Palm Sunday. Thank God for it. And as I look into this message today, and maybe you out there that's on the media ministry and you want to give your life to Christ. Do I have anyone out there that want to give their life to Christ on the media ministry? This is your proper time. Do I have anyone that's inside of this sanctuary that want to give their life to Christ? Do I have one today that would like to give their life to Christ? That could be or will be the greatest decision you could ever do is to give your life to Christ. God loves you. And God wants to praise you. He wants to lift you up. He wants to take care of you. But I want you to know that if you are in the media ministry and you want to give your life to Christ and you want to join this church, you can give me a call. Pastor Jackson at 704-864-6222. Extension I'm under a mandate to, to reach out to you. You reach out to me, I'm under a mandate from God to reach back out to you because we want to draw as many people to Christ as possible. And, and if I'm not there by the phone, leave it on my answer machine and I will definitely get back 
get back to you. And then if you want to, maybe this word was inspiring to you. And you want to be a blessing to the church. And, and maybe sometime you, you might say that I don't have much. And I, I don't want to give so little. But listen, whatever God places on your heart to give, you may call it little. God can turn it around to being big. Don't, 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 don't stop. If you don't have a, but, but, but three dollars, two dollars, whatever you have, and you want to bless God's ministry, you do it. Ask the Lord, what shall I give? And the Lord will tell you, will I bless you with this and I bless you with that? He'll tell you what you should give. Some may give three dollars. And then he may tell some may be given two hundred or a hundred dollars. But however, God explained it to you. And listen to me, you cannot beat God giving. You cannot beat his giving. He'll give, and he'll give you more than you gave back. To God be the glory. All right. Now, as we get ready for our work, our work, communion. This is a time for communion, and I do know after the, the coronavirus came, a lot of things for us changed, and we tightened up a lot of stuff, and we expanded some things. But what we're going to do now, we're going to get ready as we uh, get ready for communion. We're going to step back into the, the train and the plan that we did long ago. And if you were at home getting ready for this communion, I want you to get you some liquid. Whether it be water, soda pop, wine, or whatever strong drink it may be, we're gonna get it ready and consecrate it. We're gonna bless it. Gracious Lord, our Heavenly Father, as we get ready to partake of your God, we pray that you would consecrate this element as we take them in the manner that they were given. And we pray, God, that you would bless us. Pray, God, that you would be with us as we enjoy this communion. And Lord Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us all of our shortcomings. Bless us with that brotherly and, and sisterly love today as we enjoy one another. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. It was there. This is a great time. This is a very, very special time. And the Lord counted highly. He didn't tell us how many times we had to partake of this, 
But he said, as often as we partake of this element, that we do it in remembrance of him. In other words, he wants us to remember how he suffered, bled, and died on the cross in something that he did not have to do, but he did it out of love for you and I, that he went to the cross that would secure your eternal life. He went to the cross. He saw Emma, Elizabeth, Jackson. He went to the cross for her. He saw David. I forgot the middle name. Patton. <laughs> went to the cross. Sister Eleanor went to the cross. It's personal. Sister Gibbons, he went to the cross for you. And he went to the cross for me. That I may have the right to the tree of everlasting. I'm, I want you to know I'm going to live forever. And each time I partake of the supper of the Lord, I do it in remembrance of what the Lord and Savior did for us. into the city and he explained to them you're going to see a man with a pitcher of water follow him to the guest room and he will make preparations and I want y'all to make preparation for me when I get there and so he took bread and when he had broke it he said take and eat this is my body that was broken for you. And as often as you take and eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. And then he said, likewise, when he took the cup, he said, this is my blood of the New Testament that was shared for many for the remission of sin. And he said, as often as you partake of this, take it in remembrance of me. You may drink.
I am happy all the day. This is going to end our service today, and I pray that you be with us next week here at St. John. Next Sunday will be Easter Sunday, and I'm sure God will have another message for you next Sunday. I'll be looking forward to seeing you same time, same place, next Sunday at St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Peace out to you.